a 3D printer enclosure made out of a cube table from Walmart. I imagine you can get it out of the cube table at other places. And on top of it is a stand for filament. And believe it or not, that stupid little stand took about 12 foot of 3 quarter inch square tubing to, to make that stupid little stand. Kind of amazing how, how many linear feet of something it takes to make something that small. Some of the features of this thing. Now the front is a piece of plexiglass and there's a magnet. A magnet right here and a little piece of metal screwed to the plexiglass. So there's no way this is going to fall down. You've got to physically pull on it to break it loose from the magnet. It's got magnets around the edges of it, these little round magnets, also from Walmart. They didn't do anything but a piece of a speaker magnet. If I turn that, holds it shut. <clears throat> There's a little metal insert in the top so that uh, flakes of this particle board uh, don't get knocked off. It's glued in and the filament goes through that little, little uh, bushing there, little aluminum bushing. And of course the rack doesn't make any difference what the diameter of it is or, or whatever. I don't have dimensions on that, but I think I did put dimensions for, for where the holes are that it mounts to in one of the videos and stated. So you get an idea of, I mean, it's simple, it fits in, inside these uh, side panels, these side panels just slip out with all the junk fall out. These are printed clamps that, that hold it. There are six to each side except of course the front. A continuous hinge. It, it's, it's a simple enclosure. And like I, I'll probably state several times, this cube table was exactly the perfect size for this 3D printer, for rep, rep, Guru I3. So, now to show some of the inside features that you may or may not want to do. <laughs> Up at the top, there's an LED light, and there's a tube with 3D printed clamps that hold it that the wires run through to the, to the light in the front of the cabinet. In the back is a humidity, temperature, and time o'clock. Over there is an air intake for the power supply. And on this side, yeah, you can't see it, but anyway, if you look, look on the side down here, you'll see a, a hole down at the bottom, that air goes in and a hole a little further up that the air comes out of that circulates through a shroud on the inside here to help keep the, the electronics cool. It goes over the, the Adreno and the ramp card or whatever they call it. There are clamps, 3D printed clamps that hold it down. The clamps in the back also have some fingers that stick up that control or capture some of the wires and uh, on the I don't know there's a 3D printed clamp back there holding some wires together that's some of the features on the inside that uh, this particular cabinet has and then on the outside is a document holder 3D printed document holder with all the paperwork for the printer. I have another video, video on YouTube about 3D printed parts that I did for a friend of mine. It maybe shows more detail of the cabinet, definitely some of those parts that I just described. So if you want to go look at it, feel free to do so. When I decided to make an enclosure for the RepRap Guru i3, I went to Walmart, and at Walmart, I found this cube table. And it was about $35, and the dimensions on it were absolutely perfect. There's nothing I could have built 
from scratch that would have had dimensions any better than this thing for an enclosure for the 3D printer. So I recommend one of these things. I have a suggestion, another suggestion. Before you drill your holes, make yourself a little drill fixture. If you use as many of those clamps as I did, that's a bunch of holes. And it'll go a whole lot quicker and it'll look better because they'll all be positioned the same. So that's my recommendation and I'm sticking to it. That made that go real quick. All I got to do is <laughs> do that a bunch more times and I have all the clamps on. And I'm going to I'm only going to put clamps on three sides. The top, I'm going to cut, cut this board that goes in here where it sticks up above the top to give me a rim all the way around the top of the little cube table. So I lay something down that don't roll off. A hinge to the front will uh, hopefully keep things from running off the front. And, and obviously you do this if you make yourself a drill fixture. You do this before you put the wooden boards in. Before I forget it, it just occurred to me that I'll have to put some more holes in this drill fixture because when I drill the holes for the clamps for the sides, they can't be in line with these. I don't know if that's in the video or not. Yeah, that's in the video. It can't be in line with these because the screws would hit one another. So I'll have to offset those holes. However, the drill fixture will work fine for the bottom all the way around. Uh, I didn't want to drill more holes, go the trouble to do that, so I kind of cheated a little bit. What I did is I've got the holes offset from one another for the side brackets. And what I did, I just drew a line. Of course, the line's on the other side as well as this side because I've got to flip it over on when I go over there. So, same drill fixture. Just a different way of locating it. Before it was located centered. And I had to cut it off that distance because of those screw heads. It just barely fit within those screw heads. I think it was 18 and 7 8 long or something. Yeah, you do your own measurements. Now the drill jig not only made this job really, really quick, it also keeps you from having to do all that layout work on every leg. It, it, it's all, I'd say it's almost a must to make you a drill jig. One other thing that I happen to do, it's just cause I'm an old man and forgetting is real easy. I, I did put the two bottom clamps on and I left them on while I was doing everything else to help keep my orientation, what was front and back and top and bottom. I haven't put my clamps at catch the board, those are the bottom ones. You do it how you want to, but that's how I did it. Okay, I've got all six of the the back clamps on and three of the side. The other nine are still printing, so I have to wait for them to finish. And now that the clamps are on, I can measure the width. I know what I want the height to be because I want it to stick up a, an extra inch. I already have that cut. But now I can measure the width to make them. And let me go see what load called the board. The board was less than $10 and I'll be able to paint it because it's hard and slick. And they called it hardboard. It's $7.98. Darn, I thought they, the rack said $9.98. I think they cheated themselves. Well, whatever. I'm going to be painting the inside white. Now the, the bottom board, I can go on and put it in because I don't plan to paint it. But the top board, I'm not putting it in because the bottom side, I've got a piece of triangular wood to glue in there that some LED lights are going to go on. And I'm going to paint the underneath side of the top board white. And the three sides that, that aren't polycarbonate, the clear plastic, I'm going to paint those white on the inside and black on the outside. And I recommend you sticking with the white on the inside for lighting purposes. The outside, make it whatever color you want. Just learning something the hard way. That, that wood there, that paneling, it acts like it's got some kind of wax on it. I've got to go upstairs. I'm going to take some lacquer thinner and get that paint off I just put on there and see if, see if I can get it where it'll take paint. Paint's just beading up on it. So... You'll know that ahead of time then, in the event you choose to make your enclosure this way. You're going to have to do something to get paint to stick to it. 
Well, the lacquer thinner did very little for it. I just finally just poured the paint to it. It's laying down flat so it won't run and just sit there. Of course, if it all peels off, I will have just wasted a half a can of spray paint. Maybe if you sanded it. Anyway, you're going to go in knowing knowing this much that it's that whatever that that coating is on that that board it's going to have to be dealt with get the paint to stick and hopefully just the lacquer thinner and pouring it to it pouring the paint to it will do the job i'll find out the hard way so, uh, i'll take my fingernail to it after it dries and see if it just peels off i've laid out and stepped dr the spot drilled four holes uh, three-eighths from the back, three-eighths from the side, and then five and three-eighths from the back. I put these holes five inches apart, and I'm going to make a rack to put the spools in. So I thought I'd do that really now. political as I'm going to get. Well it's coming together quite nicely. Uh, I had to print some uh, little feet for the front. That piece of glass had to be compensated for. And I'm going to put the top on later. I've, I've got to wait for some LED lights to come in and see how long where the cut places are on them. And the lights are going to be angled back. Uh, I've seen people put their LEDs in there where they're facing you looking into it. Personally, I don't like the glare of light in my face. Mine's going to be angled back where when I look in there, I'm not looking straight into the lights. To clamp it down. And the back clamps have this, this riser on it. That's for wire management. It holds wires in here. And these wires will just hopefully plop right in. Well, that's the way I intended it. Looks like it's going to work. So that keeps those wires in place and holds the thing down. It's rigid. Well, as rigid as what the machine is rigid. Short on room in this workshop or video. Video camera is going to be so far away. And the back one. I could tighten the back one up because so there's no reason for it to slide in and out. I'll just snug these up. Anyway, I'll go around and just snug those up. I like everything about it except I put the, the strips of LED lights on a 20 degree angle. And I wish now 
I had to put it on a 30 degree angle because I can still kind of see the brightness of this first strip when looking back in there. Any of you guys that work on automotive stuff know what it's like to have a drop light shining in your face. Once again, I've seen people put LED lights in the back of their enclosure. Uh -oh. And then they're shining right straight in. I don't buy into that at all. Here, I'll show you what it looks like. You notice that the little bright lights shining in my face. If I had done a 30 degree angle that, that wouldn't have happened. So now I'll put a piece of aluminum along in here that comes down a quarter of an inch or so. I don't want to drop this. Well I know why I did the 20 degrees. I wanted to make it real easy to to bring the printer out if I ever had to. You know well I'm sure something will go wrong with it and it'll have to come out to be worked on. And there's quite a bit of clearance. I could have gone to 30 degrees uh, but I didn't. So that's about the only thing right now I don't like about it. Uh, I'll put a thermometer with a humidity indicator back there. Of course that's for the whole room in a way. It used to set out in the room. Now up on top I drilled a hole right over the, the what I call the Y travel. I made a little insert and what that insert will do is keep this from going any further. I ground this off at a slight angle and, and rolls as good as it ever did. It probably has less pulling tension on it now than it had when it was coming out from the back but no it's about the same. I don't have any way of measuring that so I believe that's going to work out. Like I say the rack goes back here. I made these line up pins Adapt, adapt the rack. Huh, that's a little snug. I may have to bullet nose them when I go to put it on in case there's a little misalignment. Make it easier to get on and off. I'll probably just epoxy these right to the cabinet. Or maybe I'll epoxy them to the, to the stand. Uh, anyway, stand comes next. I guess that's what I'll start on today. Well I got rid of that glare. A little chrome piece of aluminum I guess. It's, it's sharp looking and it even had an angle. I cut most of the angle off. It uh, traps the wires back up in there where they don't hang down so I don't ever throw anything away. I have no idea what that came off of. Probably a refrigerator or something once upon a time. But uh, Anyway, I got the glare out of my eyes, so the light goes where it's supposed to and not in my eyes. I might point out that sheet of paper is there for a reason. When I drilled that hole up there, I didn't have that covered up. And a little bitty piece of that particle board or whatever that top shelf of the cube table is made out of, got in there and... and uh, Stopped up my nozzle and it took a while to get it unstopped. So I pretty well don't learn anything except by the hard way. But maybe y'all can uh, think ahead a little bit, especially since I pointed it out. You do any kind of work above that where the filament goes in, you need to cover that hole up and keep the dirt out or you get to suffer the consequences. Luckily I had some really small drill bits go down to number 80. I'm not sure what they are. They hardly can even see them. But anyway I managed to get it unstopped on about the third, third try with that uh, one of those little drills. Let's see it probably been about a 78 drill bit. 